Hello and welcome to California Security and Automation System with another video about electronics and microchips. In today's video, I'll show you how to connect Atmega328 PU microchip, which is the brain of Arduino Uno, to the Ethernet. And what I'm going to show you today is something you can do for your final project. So let's get started and see how we connect that. So I'm going to go the first thing with the requirements. The requirements, the hardware requirements are we need Atmega328 chip, PU chip, and we need uh, 16,000 crystals. So that's uh, we will have our Atmega328 uh, running on 16 uh, megahertz and we need two, two 20, 220s of the capacitors and we need the most important part is the W5500 light they called you can search it on Google and you will find a lot uh, there is in AliExpress you can find it in eBay and we need AMS 117 uh, 11 11 17 and that's a converter from the 5 volt to 3 volt because uh, W5500 light uh, works uh, on 3 volt and our Atmega328 works on the 5 volt and we need one farad capacitor and that's going to be connected between the FTDI and the and uh, the Atmega328 to reset and we of course need the FTDI which is the USB to serial so we can program our uh, at Mega 328 chip and we need LED that's um, gonna be for our demo because we are gonna use it to uh, control it remotely from our cell phone and we need 1k resistor that's gonna be uh, for the LED so we don't burn it out and for the software requirement uh, by the way before we go to the software the hardware part the Atmega 328 we need a chip that already have a bootloader uh, upload it to it so in this tutorial I'm not going to show you how to upload the bootloader to it uh, I'm going I'm to assume that you have one that's already ready and uploaded to it for the software part we need the Arduino IDE any version doesn't matter uh, for the libraries we need <coughs> Ethernet that all uh, that comes with the Arduino IDE embedded or you can use the Ethernet 2 if you um, Google it, you will find it. And that one got disconnected, the Ethernet 2, but it's still working fine. Uh, that Ethernet 2 works perfectly with uh, W5500 module, which is we're gonna use, but it's not gonna work with the Ethernet shield uh, for Arduino. Um, if you have a lot of storage, you can use this uh, Ethernet library, it's fine. Or you can use the Ethernet 2, it works just fine with this module. For another library, we're going to use the MQTD uh, library that's going to be used for uh, as a protocol to communicate um, the chip with the with the phone. Or you can use the PopSub, uh, which is the same thing. They do pretty much the same thing. It's just different names and different syntax there. All right. And another thing important, I want you to get the pinout pictures of each of these three in front of you when you do the wiring because um, sometimes it gets a little confused so if you can see here on the let me get the pen a laser point okay so if you see here these are actually the, the physical pins these are not the pins that we're gonna use in the IDE when we program it while we gonna use these ones in here where are the brown ones right here these are gonna be used in the programming these names okay and for the uh, 5500 module we gonna need actually use these the green ones here and here we need to use the reset and of course we need to use the 3.3 and we're gonna use the ground 
for the FTDI again this is an optional uh, this is going to be used only when we need to program uh, our chip and then we can take it off when we are done um, the pins are going to be used are these three these four here and the ground we're not going to use the this one is not going to be used CTS all right so just get these um, these pinouts pictures in front of you when you are working on it um, so let's go to the next and which is the wiring all right on this picture I will be talking a little bit how to connect them so the first thing you want to do is connect the crystal and the two capacitors and this part and the LED if you go here this part here that's the first thing you're gonna need to connect so because if we if you start programming it uh, you will uh, you will need to get this one already soldered to the Atmega 320A chip to get it to work with a 16 megahertz speed and the second thing I I did is uh, wiring the W5500 uh, module which is the Ethernet module and I put this picture right here for you so you can see that pins all right and here's the voltage regulator step down regulator for the uh, 5500 so the main power is going to be 5 volt and we will reduce it to 3.3 volt which is that what that's what what the module requires here if you put it on 5 on 5 volt you will you will burn it so just just use that uh, regulator and other than that you're going to need to connect these uh, FTDI module again this is going to be like just a pinout you know you can just connect to it and program it and then you can take it off and then just power the uh, the rest of your project off of 5 volt um, something that I want to mention if you are programming your uh, your your chip just don't uh, don't don't power it from 5 volt and Put that uh, FTDI. I don't think it's gonna be, it's gonna happen anything, or it's gonna burn it just to for a sake of programming. You don't want to get uh, confused, or maybe your your program is not gonna be uploaded correctly. So just disconnect uh, the five volt and the ground, the main ones, and then uh, program it with these. When when you put the FTDI, you program it. Just connect it with this power here. And if you have this one, a similar one, make sure that you have uh, your uh, your jumper on 5 volt, not on 3.3 volt. All right, so that is the schematic. I'm gonna erase it here. And if you want to take a picture, you get a screenshot of it, and you can keep it so you can follow the uh, schematic in here. And now it's the part for the coding. I'm gonna talk about it. so here is our beautiful code it is very simple I'll show you it's actually two slides that a code and here is it so I started with the Ethernet 2 as you can see here so with the Ethernet 2 and mqtt.h these are two library that I'm going to use today let me change the highlight okay and then for the set, for the network setup, I put the MAC address. You can define your MAC address whatever you want it. Uh, you can change these 90, 18, 93 to whatever you want. Okay, and the host name, you can name it whatever you want in here. And for the Boolean DHCP, I put that Boolean DHCP, I will talk about it in a little bit later. And then I declare, declare the LED. Uh, for the pin 2 which I did integer LED equal to that's the pin 2 which is the physical pin number 4 on the chip itself and then I set up the MQTT server so uh, yeah parameters so you have a MQTT server here whatever your MQTT server that you are using and I highly recommend the um, cloud MQTT or MQTT cloud something like that uh, it's um, you can sign in with them and they 
they can offer you a free server there and just connect to their server it's very awesome and very fast and uh, here's the port where I'm going to connect to the whatever whatever port is your MQTT broker is and then if you have a username you can put it there if you if you don't have anything if you don't have username and password just leave it a blank do, do not type anything not even the username here and there, if there's a if there's a username just type it here if there's a password just type it here if there is nothing just keep them I'll leave them empty and for the MQT device ID uh, you can type whatever you want in here and for the subscribe so the subscribe uh, I did it just at mega or you can do it whatever you want whatever this project name is uh, you can do it here so we can send the uh, uh, published messages to this uh, subscribe topic and then we can get the the LED turning on and off and then I cleared the Ethernet client as net and MQTT client as client and I will be talking about the this <coughs> uh, function in here and just a bit this function and actually we have another void message received in here and I will talk to them uh, about them in just a bit. Let me show you what is going on on the setup function. So on the setup, I have put delay of 500 millis, and the reason is for it's good to just delay a little bit, waiting for the um, Ethernet module to boot up or you know to get connected, and then if the Ethernet begin. That's the if the MAC address if it's equal to zero, that means that it is not connected. And our DHCP boolean, that's what I show you on the previous slide. If you see here, DHCP boolean, it's actually zero now. And if we have it, if we don't have Ethernet connected, so what is going to happen is going to go to D, it's going to change it to DHCP. It's equal one. And if it's equal one you see here if DHCP equal one so that means there is we are unable to configure serial print that's something we're gonna print it on the serial port so we can see what is uh, serial monitor so we can see what is going on and again it's gonna tell you that the controller board is, is ready or it's offline we can tap whatever you want there you want to see and therefore debugging but if else that mean if there is an internet and it's working just fine, I will go to the serial begin in here and start that one. And we set up the input pin. We'll continue and I will get the LED. We declare it as an output and we will start with low. We want to be off. And this is a client set. Well, this is something optional. Uh, you can do it with the MQTT uh, library. Uh, what what nice about it I like it is if if my microchip or the the power goes down it will send a message to my broker the MQTT server broker will send a message to the to all the client telling them that that particular device is offline or it is not so that's very good for monitoring if you have like a device and it went off it will send you the the broker will send you a message it'll tell you that device is off so you can go ahead and look at it while it's powered off again this is something optional if you want to do it or not so if the DHCP stays on zero that means it's working fine uh, we're gonna go to connect that's where we go to the other slide to connect and I will call this function here and we'll start connecting that's something we will be typing on this real monitor and then we will get what is the IP gateway subnet and it will tell us that the internet connection is success if it got connected and then after that we will start our um, MQTT broker we will client begin and then MQTT server port and net and then a client message received do you see that client on message received it will call this one here this function here so this function here what it does it is keeps looking if if anything received to the um to the uh what they call it, the topic that we 
uh, specified it, which is the M key to subscribe here. And if you see, yeah, and, and then on a client message, as we said, goes to this one here. And if you keep going down, that's connecting to the username and password here. And the client that will tell you if it's connected to the broker or not. You see, not connected, and then MQTT broker success. And then here we go, it's client.subscribe, MQTT subscribe, which is right here. I will tell you right here. So I will call this MQTT and we will subscribe to this topic there. And uh, this message received will be listening to this topic in there. And well, um, if you get any message, so here is here is we define it. If we get if the message says on, so if it's at mega here and we'll receive on message, that's gonna turn on the LED on. If we get off message, it will turn it off as you can see here. So that's pretty much uh, all what we have in the code. Uh, let me clear this one here very quick. Okay, we were talking about the connect in here. We got to connect. And then again, as we said, uh, DG, DHCP equal equal one, we will um, just go on offline. And then on the loop, we are just making sure that everything is connected. And this, this part here is making sure that our um, network and the client is is uh, connected to the which is MQTT broker and the internet is connected so every um, 10 millis it checks if it's connected or not and then if the client is not connected it will it will type on Sriamonta that is trying to reconnect and then it will go to connect again function to make sure to try to get the internet up running again so that's the loop to just keep the the ethernet working and the MQTT broker connected successfully so uh, pretty much that's all what I have and uh, let me show you that um, how uh, my my board that I designed actually I didn't show you how like to solder it I don't want to like waste time on uh, having you watch a video how to solder it I already showed you how the um, schematic work on how the wiring is so I'll just show you some pictures of my uh, final product that I put it on a prototype and um, here, as you can see, these are some pictures of my work that I've done to this Atmega 328 and the Ethernet module. And here, I'll show you this video on how it's working using the phone. As you can see here, it's turning on and off just from the cell phone. All right, guys, that's all what I have for today's video. Thank you for watching. Please, if you like this video, consider subscribe. Um, yeah, so I can get more videos like this in the future. If you give me, if you support me, I'll get more videos, uh, more nice videos like this. Uh, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.